What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And I know what you're thinking. Treeb, I thought you were done with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I thought you weren't going to like the Jags anymore. That's not... That's not the point. I'm a YouTuber at the end of the day. You gotta do what gets them clicks. And that's what that title did. The title got them clicks. And that's just how it is. That's just how it is. So you wanna know how YouTubers think? That's how we think. Are you gonna click a video that says Jaguars versus Texans week number two recap? Yep, yeah, probably. Because you're loyal fans and I'd hope you click on all my videos. But aren't you really gonna click and really watch I'm done with the Jacksonville Jaguars? Think about it. I'm not completely done with the Jags. I'm still going to be a fan. I'm a fan first. It's just really, really frustrating. And I think we all needed a little bit of venting time. And I got my venting out of the way. There will be a little bit more venting and a little bit more Jaguar discussion tomorrow. You stay tuned for that. Um, I should have Jagging Off on there. From what I know, because this video is going to be recorded today and posted tomorrow. And from what I from what I'm hearing and from what I think, I think uh Jagging Off is gonna be on the video for sure. Jason from another Jags podcast will be on there. And Mr. Why You Mad is gonna be on there as well. So stay tuned tomorrow for that video. But today we're gonna be previewing the Jaguars versus Texans week number three matchup on prime time, the Jags only prime time game on Thursday night football. There's a lot to discuss and this game feels really Really weird, so let's hop right into the video, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Tennessee Titans, week number three, preview. So, this game in itself feels really weird. I don't know how to feel about this game. There's part of me that I basically know Jalen Ramsey's going to play. He had a press conference today, and he said that as of now, he's if he's here on Thursday, he is going to play. He's going to play for us. And part of me wants to think that Jalen's just going to ball out and he's a great player. And if he plays and A.J. Boye's healthy, Cam Robinson's healthy, I don't think there's a wide receiver. I don't know why I threw Cam Robinson in there with, when I'm talking about the corners. But, you know, Jalen and A.J., I don't think that there's a wide receiver that can match up well against D.J. even. D.J. Hayden, A.J. Boye, Jalen Ramsey. I don't think a Tennessee Titan receiver matches up well with either one of those cornerbacks. And I think that that will thrive defensively. And I think offensively, this is going to be the opportunity for Gardner Minshew to shine. Because Houston and Kansas City both had electrifying offenses that play really good football. And this Jaguar defense last week did a good job shutting down that Houston offense and making sure that they had every opportunity in the world to win. And I think this defense has an opportunity to do that yet again. I would like to see this defensive line get after it a little bit more. Um, I don't think anybody on the D-line through two weeks has a sack. I know Miles Jack has one. I think Quincy got one week one. I know a linebacker got one week one. I know DJ Hayden has one. Leon Jacobs has one. Miles Jack has one. Um, all those guys have sacks, and they come from the linebackers in the secondary through blitzing. I'd like to see this defensive line, you know, kind of come out and get some sacks. You know, Clayus Campbell looks like he's on the decline, man. I couldn't even tell you week number two how many tackles he missed. Like, you're six foot eight, and you can't just, like, put yourself on top of these guys like you can't you can't you know make a play make a tackle it's kind of embarrassing I the tackling needs to step up defensively and with that tackling too what also needs to step up defensively is clearly the um tackling needs to step up clearly as well as the run defense the run defense and the tackling goes hand in hand this run defense has been atrocious we let Carlos Hyde of the Houston Texans a guy that was on our team last year just completely completely run all over us and Derrick Henry has a history of running all over us especially on Thursday night football games we can't let Derrick Henry have a big game we got to contain Mariota we got to get after him we got to sack him we got to make sure that the Jaguar defense puts us in every great situation in order for us to win I'm really focused on this defense going up against this Titans offense because it's weird to say but I have a lot of confidence in the offense so we're going to go over the offense a little bit later but I really think that this run defense along with the ability to tackle needs to step up as a whole on this defensive side of the ball I think they make good plays I think as far as the secondary goes they really take away throwing lanes 
um, and they make sure that the quarterback needs to make a difficult decision and, you know, fit the ball into a tight window. But this defensive line, these linebackers, I think, tackling-wise, really need to step up, especially against a big running back like Derrick Henry or a mobile quarterback like Marcus Mariota, a guy that we always, always struggle against, and we're going up against a team we haven't beat since 2016. And I think Gardner Minshew is going to be a go down as a Jaguar legend if he ends up breaking that streak. And I'm really excited to see how this offense does against this Tennessee defense. I'm not too worried about this Titans defense. I think Houston's defense was definitely a lot more to, uh, they had a lot more to worry about on the defensive side of the ball uh, Houston did. And I don't think defensively for Tennessee, nobody really worries me that much. I think the offensive line did struggle week number two against Houston, but I think as a whole, they held up all right. You know, for the group that's out there, you know, having Will Richardson at the left tackle position and, you know, having injuries early on in the season to this offensive line, I think they perform about as good as they can. You can't expect this group with all the injuries and all the dings that they have on them to, you know, perform at an elite level. But I think for what they have been given, they have been playing pretty much all right. I think they did struggle against Houston. I made that known. But again, I think overall, you know, now that I'm a little bit more calm, I think that they, they're playing all right. They're playing all right for what co the cards are dealt. And the defensive line for Tennessee is basically, I think, their strong suit on the defensive side of the ball. So we need to make sure that we're blocking those defensive linemen and our offensive line are doing their job. Leonard Fournette needs to actually be reliable and be accountable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, in the passing game, he's good, you know, check downs, getting six, seven yards. But in the run game, that's where he really needs to strive because as of right now, you know, he's a downhill runner in between the tackles, and he just is not getting it done doing that. He's not the running back that we thought he was. And I've, I've gone, I went off on Leonard Fournette all I could last week, yesterday, not last week, but yesterday. And I'm not going to really go off on him too much either. But, you know, that's going to be part of the success. And it looked like Leonard Fournette, you know, wasn't really helping out Gardner Minshew that much. You know, a quarterback, six-round draft pick. You know, he had to go out there and kind of win it himself. And you really like to see that out of a guy like Gardner Minshew, again, who was a six-round draft pick. And, you know, you're not sure exactly what you're going to get out of him. And hopefully he continues to play well and continues to, you know, go out there and win football games. You know, the guy's a winner. He makes sure that he makes smart throws. He gets the ball to his wide receivers. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, Bortles couldn't even do that. Bortles couldn't even get the ball to his wide receivers. And it's just a breath of fresh air to see a guy like Gardner Minshew go out there and just deliver the ball. Of course, right now wearing my 1998 Rose Bowl champion uh, Washington State Cougars sweater, so you know I'm always repping Wazoo. So I'm really hoping for Minshew to have another uh, breakout game and to show why he has an opportunity to really lead this team and to be the quarterback of the future. The Jags also have a pretty easy game against Denver the following week, so uh, Jacksonville beating Houston is going to be, I mean beating Tennessee is going to be huge because if the Jags do beat the Titans... And they have a real, real, a real realistic shot at going two and two to start the season and going fifty percent and beating Tennessee, and then hopefully the Colts and the Texans can drop a couple of games to make sure that the Jags are kind of still in the thick of things in the AFC South race. This is going to be a huge game, I think. If the Jags drop this game, the season's over. I know it's a little early to say that, but an zero and three start for this Jacksonville Jaguar team is going to be really, really hard to bounce back from, and I don't see this team doing it. Unfortunately, I think that this is a must win game, especially for the season and, you know, for the coaching staff, the guys in the front office, for the players, you know, like how bad do you actually want to win football games? Are you going to tank because you don't like this front office players? Players, are you going to, I mean, front office, are you guys going to just call shit plays because these players aren't doing what you want them to do? You know what I mean? Like we need to go out there, make sure winning is the number one priority. This is a must win game against a divisional rival that is probably our biggest divisional rival, a team that we haven't beat since 2016 and it's a primetime game on Thursday night and that's when we lost to the Titans the last time and we need to make sure that we go out there we do our job we take care of business because if we win this game this season could turn around really really quick and that was my Jaguars versus tight I almost said Texans I feel like I called the Titans the Texans a couple of times in this video my Jaguars versus Titans week number three preview what'd you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget you can check the links down below as well you can like me on Facebook at Dream Talks follow me on Twitter at Dream Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley also if you haven't yet make sure you hit that subscribe button click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video I drop new content on this channel six days a week ain't nobody out working me Dems just straight facts thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great rest 